events in Egypt of recent times suggest that a revolution is afoot. We know that Mubarak has now stepped down, ceding authority or abandoning the presidency to his vice president. All of them, the vice president, President Mubarak, and the rest of the ruling elites in Egypt have military experience. This transition suggests to us that the power of youth is an extraordinary one when deployed intelligently and strategically. Facebook, social media, these become vehicles for revolution in the hands of witting associates and allies of true and radical revolution and freedom and democracy. The beautiful thing here is that young people got together, reminiscent of what happened in African American culture in the 1950s and 60s and 70s, when we fomented a nonviolent revolution on American soil, a bloodless transition from one epoch to another, from one era to another, from one time to another. The young people in Tahrir Square, the young people in Cairo, the young people in Egypt more broadly, fomented a revolution, not by raising their bayonets, not by stabbing people with anything other than the poignant, piercing reality of their ideas. This suggests to us that we have to be serious about remembering those days in this country when we were able to call upon reserves and resources of serious and determined urgency to make certain that their ideas would go beyond their own circles. I don't want to romanticize the past, but what is happening in Tahrir Square is, in one sense, very inspiring. It suggests to us also that African American people here must forge connections with those black people and people of color and brothers and sisters in Egypt. Now, there have been great debates, those who follow Sheikh Anta Diop, those who follow Leonard Jeffries, those who may even agree with Zahir Ali, or those who side with John McWhorter, whether or not those people are black, whether they are in the Middle East, are they part of Africa, do we identify with them? The broader question is they are our brothers and sisters because they are vulnerable and oppressed. So what we're able to do is forge connection with them by means of not our ethnicity, but our ethical affiliation. And so revolution is necessary and important and has come to Egypt. What happens in the broader Middle East? Can we use social media as a vehicle to make certain that what happens with Palestinians and Israelis will be similar? Does the power of youth reside in the ability to teach older people how to transition from one stage of power to another without bloodshed? We'll see. But what it reminds me also is that we in America have a responsibility too. Latino brothers and sisters are all over the streets when it comes to immigration issues, as they should be. African American people who side with them should be as well. But we should also be on the streets talking about unemployment among African American youth. The struggles of poor white people in Appalachia. What happens to brothers and sisters of every color who are not employed in this modern economy? We have bailed out the AIG. We've bailed out Wall Street. We have not bailed out Main Street. So as the revolution is being celebrated by American political figures here in this country, let us also turn a sharp eye and not a deaf ear to the cause and claims of radical revolutionary action in behalf of the vulnerable right here at home. What do we do about the over-incarceration of black youth? What do we do about this strong and persistent drumbeat that tells young people they cannot learn? If we in America take an example from Tahrir Square, we will see that it is not a quarantined geography. It is a state of mind. It is a state of being that if we tap into it, we too can participate. So we side with our brothers and sisters in Africa, in the Middle East, those whose backs are against the wall. We pray that the governments there will heed the call of the people. But here in America, we forge connections with those brothers and sisters and say to those who are vulnerable right here, we side with you too. Where is Egypt in America? We said long ago, as black people are wont to say, Pharaoh, let my people go. Now we must say, now that Pharaoh has stepped aside, where will the people go? What will we do? What shall they do? If we continue to be invested in their lives, if we continue to invest our moral and economic and spiritual resources, making sure that democracy flourishes, 
then we must not simply be interested in foreign and exotic demonstrations that, of course, exhibit profound and radical democracy. We must be concerned about what happens here as well. God bless Egypt. God bless the vulnerable people of the Middle East, of Africa. But God bless also the people around the world who need a similar revolution to show that the specter of injustice will be dismissed and that the possibility of bloodless and peaceful revolution still exists. Mm -hmm.